Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Death Beach here, and today we're gonna to be tackling a big question that I get. Why are there so many of these marketplaces? And clearly we recognize that even more of them are coming. We're also gonna be taking a look at the difference and some of the messaging that's taking place between the types of platforms and marketplaces. Of course, I believe the best strategy is to be as independent as possible in creating your NFTs and as platform agnostic as possible that you can be and really engaging with your fan base and trying to create your own website or using some sort of white label solution so that you're directly interacting with your fans. Let's take a look at Sing real quick. Now you've probably seen this advertised on Instagram, places like that. Uh, interesting celebrities for, you know, to be advertising, but let's read this here. For artists and fans, Sing is an ecosystem that bridges the gap between artists and fans. This means no more middlemen. Artists control their own assets and fans are able to directly support their favorite creators. Sing was created in collaboration with artists, by artists, for artists, and fans. Goes on to talk about it being eco-friendly, no gas fees, etc., etc. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what I don't see here. I don't see what blockchain they're using, and I also don't know if these NFTs can even leave their marketplace, okay? So what's that mean? Well, that means I can't really attach too many special privileges to it if the wallet is specific to their site. Like, unless I can send the NFT to a MetaMask or something like that, you know, and then how do I resell it? I have to resell it in their marketplace. It's, it's a little limiting. There's some more information that needs to be known. Okay, Mint Songs. Very similar to the other site. I do wanna say their main pages, not a lot of information. And again, turn your songs into eco-friendly NFTs with us for $0 minting fees. We wanna help you capture more value from your music and build a Web3 community that you can call yours. Okay, so this is slightly better on the, the verbiage. I really don't agree with the eco-friendly NFT idea. If you're gonna be making these on your phone and your fans are gonna be using their phones in order to access and purchase these NFTs, uh, it's not very eco-friendly. Same thing for computers, like none of it's really eco-friendly. The mi mining of the NFTs and the minting of the NFTs is nominal compared to other things. We can see here, it's an Ethereum-based platform. Uh, this might be my favorite out of all of these. It's just, you know, I don't agree with the way they pitch some of these things. Maybe not the most interesting artwork, so they're still building up their, their platform. Uh, and then we have Noised, which claims to be the number one NFT marketplace to buy and sell collectible music and distribution rights that go with it. Okay, so what are they doing here? Well, I'm gonna tell you. Noised wants you to sell your rights and they want you to sell full rights. Now, whenever they uh, define full rights here, they say royalty distribution usage. To me, it sounds like you're giving full rights on the master recording and not on the writing. However, they don't really draw that distinction, which is a little interesting to me um, because I think that that's extremely important. Am I really giving away all my work? And then the idea is, as the purchaser of one of their NFTs, now you go to distribute it. Right, so the original artist is just selling the song. It's not even released yet. Then somebody else who believes in you pays you up front for the song and then they put it out and they try to recoup the money that they spent. They essentially, your fans become the label for the song, except you're not getting any royalties. You do get the money up front and you're getting 100% up front and it's not a loan or anything like that. It's just your money for selling your song. So. This could be, if you're a songwriter or a producer, you have lots of beats or lots of songs, this could be a good option for you to actually monetize your, your catalog. Just sell the rights and let somebody else deal with the distribution and the marketing and everything like that. Okay, so finally I wanna show you guys Busy Bees. I believe this is dropping tomorrow, so if you're watching this, you're in the know. 
This is gonna be a avatar project where they're gonna make 5,555 bees. And these are the, the types of rarities. So these are the, these will be the different bees. They are a, a record label, so that's why it's music related. And there's nothing on here that talks about being good for the environment and they're, they're outright in saying that these are on the Ethereum blockchain as ERC-721s. So you can see how people are trying to appeal to different crowds. I believe that these will probably be worth a lot, to be honest with you. Um, I, I don't have enough ETH right now to spare to go towards this. I'm sure we've all gone a little NFT crazy, but there's a great FAQ on here telling you a little bit more about the project uh, and how proceeds will be divvied back out to NFT holders, things like that. I want to jump in real quick and just go over Crypto Confidence coming out Tuesday where we're going to meet twice a week for four weeks and go over blockchain basics, crypto basics, we're going to be getting some crypto, we're going to be using wallets, understand how to transfer it around and really build a solid foundation to our crypto knowledge. Of course, signing up for Crypto Confidence is a great way to support me and the channel but also just simply liking this video helps out so much. And if you're new here, subscribing and commenting down below with any questions, also very helpful. Okay, so NFTs, Ethereum, other blockchains, what the heck is really going on? Is there an Ethereum killer? Is Solana it? Look, Ethereum is Ethereum and Ethereum does what Ethereum does. Now there will be other blockchains and networks that do something similar, and they are all now fighting for the second place market share. Okay, that is what's happening. Nobody's killing Ethereum. What types of NFTs end up on all these different platforms is yet to be seen, but each blockchain, I believe, will be home to a type of NFT or a type of ecosystem and then other blockchains will fight for second place market shares of those things. So we're gonna see corporate NFTs are gonna be coming really, really soon. Uh, and we already have art NFTs, we're seeing music. We have yet to really see gaming, even though it's blowing up right now, fully flourish. VR, the metaverse, uh, we are seeing a lot of building for that, particularly on Ethereum. But we're yet to see where exactly the biggest platform is going to be. Quickly, Dog Coins, Doge, Shib, Floki, Doge GF. Um, what's going on here? Well, I'd like to tell you what I think is going on here. There's another YouTube channel, Matty G TV. Uh, it's a pretty crazy channel to watch and follow, but I think he's dead on. These are intellectual property. These are characters and people are buying into the community of these characters. And if there is ever some sort of internet show about dogs or the doggy society or something like that, it's game over. These are going to be heavyweight intellectual property coins. Just imagine if the Simpsons were tokenized, what would the Simpsons be worth now after all this time? I think that's what we could be seeing with these dog coins. So don't rule them out. We don't really know what's coming. Uh, I like Doge GF. Um, they're gonna have a gifting platform, like a donations platform, and they're also into reciprocity a lot, so I highly recommend going over to the website and checking it out. You know, obviously don't just FOMO in blind. It is a highly risky uh, buy, so also know that going into it, not financial advice, never on this channel. But in addition, we gotta talk about this, okay? This $600 rule with the IRS, any transaction. You know, in September, they were talking about tax the rich, Okay, and this is what they came up with. Okay, well then we need to see every transaction of $600. So if you're any sort of creative that's getting paid on Venmo, forget about it. They're, they're coming for you. And then we have this, the most recent thing, unrealized capital gains tax. 
So if you have cryptocurrency, property, stocks, whatever, any sort of investment, if it goes up in value, they just simply want to tax you on that increase in value, even though you haven't cashed it out to turn it into anything yet, right? So what if you pay taxes on it and then it goes down? I mean, perhaps if you're extremely wealthy, it doesn't really matter too much. You don't worry about it. You write it off the next year. But if you're a regular person like myself, if I had to pay the, the capital gains tax on my unrealized gains right now, I mean, that would basically wipe me out. So that's what they're, I believe they're trying to do here. So we have to be really careful in what we're doing. And I do believe things like NFTs, there's a reason people are funneling their money into these. I don't know what of these are going to be really worth anything in the long run, okay? But what I can tell you is the technology allows for new experiences for you and your fans. And that, to me, is the whole point. And once we get through this initial buzz phase, I think that we'll start to see how this is all actually going to work. And that is where I'm a little bit more focused. You know, whenever we get over this hump, how is it going to work? How are you really building community with your fans? and creating that positive feedback loop that I always talk about. And I think social tokens are gonna to play a huge, huge role in that. Again, if any of this kind of seemed like it might've gone a little over your head in what we're talking about, Crypto Confidence is starting on Tuesday. We will be meeting twice a week, covering various topics, okay? You can read it right here. I don't wanna go over all of it. It's a little, a little lengthy, but I will be preparing presentations that we'll go over on the first meeting that week. And then we get to have discussions and then you get a few days to go and experiment, come back and ask questions. The best thing to do is just discuss crypto and what you're interpreting and what's going on and really just talking about it. That is the best way to learn about it. And, and it's not even about learning about crypto so that you can make money. It's about learning about the technology so that you can understand how to best leverage it with whatever you're doing, art, music, whatever your business is, there is probably a way that we can utilize this stuff. But if you don't understand the basics and you don't even have a Coinbase, you can't even buy some Bitcoin or Ethereum and get it over to OpenSea to buy an NFT, you're, you're way behind right now. And we got to get you caught up. And this is a great way to get caught up. You can take a course over on Udemy, 40 bucks, maybe 30 bucks to learn about blockchain and crypto and whatnot. The big difference, you're not going to have anybody to talk to. And we're going to be meeting in groups. Of course, you can come over to the Crypto Music Club, which, you know, all the links down below in the description box. Highly encourage it. I'll talk to you guys soon.